Peyton Wall, she's standing by live in Sochi, Russia. Nick, what do we know about the nature of this new threat? Well, Jake, this email, which seems to have been the same one received by the Hungarian, Italian, German and Slovenian uh, National Olympic Committee, seems to have been vague, seems to have been suggesting a threat that to blow perhaps part up uh, of a contingent here. But it was quite swiftly downplayed, as you mentioned, by the International Olympic Committee, who seemed to be suggesting it was just a member of the public. There's been other traffic intercepted, which purports to perhaps have been uh, communication between Russian officials discussing a threat. But in this part of the world, where I've worked a, really uh, a decade now, you do see a lot of chatter like this, confused signals at times. And of course, everyone's deeply scrutinizing anything they can right now to work out what might threats could possibly be around. We've seen warnings about potentially three female potential suicide bombers in the area, one maybe near Sochi. That's often something you'll see in this part of the world quite regularly. Week by week, notices will go out where they're looking for people who launch the attacks that blight this part of the world uh, on a regular basis. But it's just right now, with this huge international event coming here, those threats, those daily attacks are now under massive international scrutiny, of course, because people are terrified about what might happen to athletes when they actually come here, Jake. And Nick, how successful can the Russian security operation be based on what you're seeing there? Well, I mean, they'll throw down a substantial dragnet, a, a sort of a cordon around the games itself. It's already pretty hard to get near uh, anywhere near the, the area without the accreditation, which I tried to get today, but the machines were down. They couldn't actually issue the badges. The problems, though, come down to the training and the knowledge of the actual soldiers and troops on the ground. The policeman, I tried to move past. He said he'd only been, been there for a day. He didn't even know the name of the street he was, in fact, on. And the Russians have a history of flooding the zone, so to speak, of many police, but occasionally lacking the coordination to prevent stuff getting through. That's Sochi. They'll probably do quite a good job in Sochi and Adler, where the Olympic Village is, at keeping major disasters out. But this is a massive region that stretches all the way over uh, to the Caspian Sea as well. Dagestan, where so many of these blasts uh, we've been hearing have been originating, where the Sanaya brothers, who allegedly bombed Boston, were also from. It's going to be very difficult to put a lid on all violence across this massive region for the entire period. They simply don't have the manpower. And bear in mind, you know, Jake, there's bombs, assassinations going off nearly every day for the past 10 years. I don't exaggerate here. This is a region that's been very volatile for a long period of time. The idea that suddenly an international event and uh, the Russian federal government focusing its resources can suddenly switch that kind of violence off, it's simply not going to happen. So there will be something happening. The question is, does it actually hit this Olympic village or the area around it, Jake? All right, Nick Payton-Walsh, thank you so much.